welcome or welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I have a special guest. Hi, I'm Taylor. And today we will be doing a how we got into Howard video. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Okay, so. So first we're just gonna start by introducing ourselves with our Howard intros. So you should start. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Taylor Destin. I'm a freshman marketing major from Houston, Texas. Hi everyone, I, my name is Jasmine Love. I'm a freshman finance major from Houston, Texas. Nice. So next is our high school stats. So we're just gonna do GPAs, your weighted and your unweighted, and then your SAT, if applicable, like if you submitted it, or if you, if you didn't submit it, if you want to say you can, and then your rank, if applicable. Okay, you want me to go first? Sure. Okay, GPA, 4.0, um rank i was like 35 out of i think 400 um just top 10 like percent or whatever um sat i took it but i didn't apply with it so i'm not gonna say my score it was it was terrible but um yeah that's basically it that's that's it right yeah so my GPA unweighted was a 3.68, I believe. And my weighted was a 5.4. And um, I did not submit with my test score, so no need to say. And uh, what was the other one? Uh, rank, yeah. I was in the second quartile. So there's four quartiles. Top 50 is in the top two. And then bottom 50 is in the three and four. So I'm in the second quartile. Yes, ma'am. Okay, next. Uh, APs, honors. Um, I guess I'll start. I did never took an AP class in my entire life. Um, I honors. I think if that means pre advanced, then I don't know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. freshman and sophomore year. Yes, I took honors classes. Um, but after my sophomore year, junior year, I was supposed to be taking dual credit. But my my that's when we got shut down for COVID and stuff. And since my PSAT score was not high enough for me to exempt taking a TSI, I was required to take the TSI in order to take dual credit classes. And the lady told me that the, my only chance is to take it was like a Friday. And she told me literally Thursday of the week, you know, Tuesday of the week. And I had to, I was like working like full time, full time. So I had like no way to give away a whole 11 to 930 shift that day that she wanted me to come in and take it. So. I ended up taking all regular classes my junior year and then my senior year I just felt like why am I going to stress myself out with hard classes and that's not even going to be the determining factor about me getting into school. So yeah. Okay, so I'll go next. Um, I took all like pre-P except like history, I hated history so I took that regular. Um, soft, no, was it sophomore year? No, junior year. I took an AP class. It was AP English. I really took it for no reason because I didn't take the AP test. And I ended up doing like dual um, English anyway and getting the college credit or whatever. Um, but as far as like dual credit or dual enrollment, I was in this um, program called the Mecca program. And basically we took the TSI test freshman year and then junior, senior year, we like went to this community college where we like basically graduate with our associate's degree by the, when, by the time we graduate high school. So that's what I did. So I have an associate's degree and a high school diploma. And so, yeah. Um, but as far as, I really regret taking the AP English because I, really, I didn't need to take it because the next year I took um, the dual English class and I ended up getting the credit for it anyway. But yeah. So next is extracurriculars. Um, I guess I'll start. I was on a dance team for three years of my high school life. Um, <laughs> my freshman year, I was on the debate team and I was also on the Model UN team. And uh, I mean, I was, you know, yeah. That's it, okay. Basically, I did a lot of stuff. Um, I did, varsity track all four years I did 
basketball freshman year and I did cheer, varsity cheer, like sophomore year up. Um, I was also part of, do we, oh yeah, leadership. You wanna say just that too? Oh yeah. Um, yeah, for me, um, outside of what I just told y'all, I was also a babysitter. I also worked at Chick-fil-A. I was very involved in my church. So I had a lot of things that I was doing which mm -hmm. probably constituted to the reason why I got into this school because I'm telling y'all <laughs> how it does not care. I mean, they do care about your grades, of course, but that is not the determining factor at all. Mm -mm. And for me, I was just involved in a lot of stuff in school. So like I was in NHS, National Honor Society. And I was also like student of the month, like probably sophomore year or whatever. And I was like just homecoming, like Duchess or whatever, sophomore year also. And also had a lot of community service hours. And I didn't really work throughout high school, except for senior year. But um, yeah, I was involved a lot in a lot of things. So yeah, that's basically it for me. So what was your essay about? My essay was about like what I wanted to do with my degree and like why I felt I should be enter entered into the school. So I was basically talking about how you know, I plan on getting a finance degree and then starting my own banking um, company to help underserved businesses. That's basically what mine was about. And mine was about, um, we had a prompt. I, for, I forgot what the prompt was. Because we had two essays for SOB and then for Howard. Oh, I'm just talking about the main, the main one. Okay, the main one, I forgot the prompt was, but I talked about um, not getting captain, cheer captain my senior year. And how that affected me because i knew i deserved the spot but like something i did affected it so i just talked about how like that affected me and how i was gonna like how i moved forward with it and how i like just dealt with it and yeah and optional essays um i definitely yeah. did all the option optional essays and i definitely think that y'all should do the optional yes. essays like they say optional but I, I, it's definitely I feel like it's definitely not optional. So if it says optional, do, do it. it. It's required. <laughs> but yeah, I did all my optional essays also. Um, to be honest, I didn't really take them as serious as the main essay though. It wasn't as long as my main essay. My main essay was probably like, I wanna say two pages long, two, three pages long. But like the optional ones, I just did like a quick 500 words, 300 to 500 words. So I didn't really take it that serious, but I did them. Early action, early decision or regular? I applied early action and I got in early action. Yeah, I applied early action too. Scholarships. <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I was, uh, like I told y'all, I I am a living proof that your extracurriculars can definitely get you. I mean, I wasn't bad in school. Like, my grades were above average, but it wasn't like, I wasn't one of those people that was like, salutatorian, valutatorian, uh, valedictorian, salutatorian. I was in top 10%. I was not that student. Like, you know, so Howard, they pick their, they give scholarships based off your grades, even though they admit people based off your extracurriculars. So for me, since I had, since I was in the, the 40th percent of like my class, you know how you can be top 10, top 20. Mm -hmm. I was in the 35 to 40th range, you know, and everybody else was 10%. I was, I got there at the second, the second lowest scholarship. So it was opportunity grant and I got, no, it was access grant. Then I got opportunity. So that is, uh, it's 11K a year. And then, but I also got knee base which also wasn't much. It was like 700 extra bucks. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I had got two scholarships from my school. I had got um, like Athletic Booster Club scholarship. And then I had also got a retired teacher's, I think, scholarship. It wasn't that much. And then I also got, um, it wasn't from school related, but it was like a leadership scholarship or whatever. And what else? I feel like I'm forgetting a scholarship, but from Howard. Yeah. 
What, what scholarship like did they award you from Howard? I for, like I had to look on my bus and look because I forgot. Oh, well, if we're talking about outside scholarships, I got uh I think ten k basically an outside scholarship. So I got um I got so Bo Burden, I got uh Chick Fil A, I got Greater Houston Frontiers, Greater Houston Black Chamber, um Burger King, and I think Naba Houston. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot my um, scholarships that I received from Howard. Yeah. I gotta look, but yeah. It was probably like two or three. From Howard specifically? Yeah. How? Because it was like a leadership one. Oh, so you got HU leadership? Yeah. Oh. And then it was like another one. I, I forgot. I gotta look though. I think I think the order went, I, I remember I wrote them. So it goes access, I'm going from bottom to low. It goes access grant, opportunity grant i believe after opportunity is leadership capstone achievers and then founders or founders and achievers achievers and founders at the top two so yeah yeah i, I, I don't know <laughs> and i just know that it goes it goes 11k 13k 15k 17k 19k so mm -hmm. i believe if i remember correctly achievers is the top one which is a 19k founders is the 17k and then uh capstone is 15k and then uh 13k is leadership and then uh, 11k is the opportunity and then uh the grant is literally just a grant but um but it changes every single year based off like where people are ranking so and that's why if you, if you go on the website you're never going to be able to find like how much each specific scholarship is because it varies per year based off like what the average grades are. Cause if everybody, like I know class of 22 was like a very competitive class, like everybody was extra smart. So obviously they're not gonna be able to give everybody that very high scholarship, you know? So it's just like, it basically it goes off range and how hard the, the, the class, the body class was, so. College application. Oh yeah. Um, don't procrastinate, do it early. My friend, my friend, she, was very, very smart. And she said she wanted to go to Howard and then she waited until the last minute. They even gave an extension for a regular decision and she missed the extension. So just be, just know that you're gonna have extra essays so you need to start early. And don't like, don't procrastinate. Unless you had like just horrible grades, I would say apply early uh, action. And then, okay, also early action and early decision are not the same thing. Early decision, if you apply early decision and you get in, you're like basically committed to the school. And if you don't commit to the school, the only way they're gonna let you out is if they don't, if they give you a scholarship and then you're like financially literally not able to pay for it and they like verify it, then they'll let you out. But if not, if you apply early decision and you basically, cause you basically have a higher chance of getting in with early decision because you're basically committing to the school before you even in it. So, um, you have a higher chance of getting in, so if they let you in and you and you say, "Oh, I don't want to go here anymore." You know, they I think they have the right to like disclose your name with other schools, something like that. Something I read up on. I applied early action. Early action is uh, early is your decision comes out the same time as early decision, but you're not committed to the school. So, yeah, and then regular decision is just regular decision. Yeah. Okay. For application advice. I would basically just say the same thing. Don't procrastinate. Take the essay, the main essay, very serious. And the optionals, take that serious as well. Um, just don't like just write a paragraph, no. Take those, I know I didn't say I like, I know I said I didn't take it very serious, but my word range was like 300 to 500 words. So don't write anything less than that on the optional. Now for the main, take that very serious. All right, and also, if you if you're involved in any like extracurricular activities or anything or like outside of school, put, put it down. Put it everything in your application. I swear it will help you. Yes. Because like Jasmine said, they don't just look at your grades; they look at everything you you've been involved in. And if you're not involved in anything, get involved right now. Get involved in something right now if you're watching this. Like. And don't be afraid to embellish like like let's say but of course don't overdo it because they can they can see through you know the phoniness so like i would say like if you're like oh my goodness i don't ever do anything like i have no sort of leadership skills 
well you know if you're somebody that constantly finds yourself helping other people with work you could say like you're a tutor or something like that you know mm -hmm. just like embellish and kind of like you know add some extra fluff to, <laughs> to extra. every to everything but that's if you're like you're just like oh my god I'm, I'm a senior and I never did anything with my life you know just that's that's like an advice that I would give um yeah um, all the jobs that you had and everything put it put everything on yeah it. That, that was my other advice like put everything but don't like put too much like don't because sometimes they can see like if you put oh my god i was president of this club i was president of this club president of, or you put your president president of seven clubs then they start to get skeptical like okay oh yeah they know good. lying or yeah they, you know. they would so just like be smart about it and also mm -hmm. if you find yourself with way too much stuff figure out like what's most important and what's most what makes more sense so like if you have president of student body and then you also have i used to walk dogs when i was 10 like delete that i used to walk dogs <laughs> when i was 10 because that's literally very irrelevant yeah. so yeah that's basically it dude mm. is there anything else that we should talk about like I can't think of anything. It's beginning like talking about our experience so far. Mm -hmm. So right now we are on week three. We just start, we just finished our last week of school. I mean, first week of school. <laughs> we just finished our first week of school uh, yesterday. Today's Saturday. So yeah, it was cool. We so we've been here for three weeks now. Um, just know like the hills are crazy, but I'm we're both insane. Fit. We're but we're both in shape, so it's not really that big of a deal. <sighs> Well, at least it's not to me. Maybe she was the same. Yeah, just I'm like it's it's not a big deal to me. But that one that made it, like coming from Banneker. Oh yeah, that big hill it kills me every time. Yeah, I swear. And it's like right now it's really hot outside. So like, in in the middle of the day and you're walking. Yes. It's, like one of my classes is all the way at Banneker, <laughs> and so I it's have to like walk, a mile walk, bro. Literally, and it's in a trailer. In her class, in a trailer, bro. It's in a trailer. Okay. Besides that, the school is great. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, I have to walk. Okay, I'm walking down that hill. But coming back, it's a big hill. It's very, like, steep. And I have to walk a bit. It's so hard. Yeah. And then, like, the middle of the day, it'd be so hot. Like, in the mornings, I have a 9 a.m. So, um, I have a 9 a.m. So, in the mornings, when I'm going to my 9 a.m., um, my nine when I have the nine a.m. Okay, so Monday, Wednesday, Fridays I have nine a.m. and then I have a ten a.m. But they're in the same building, so I'm not outside again until eleven. But it's, it'd be so cool in the morning. But whenever I'm going to my whenever I get out of my twelve p.m., which it ends at one. So whenever I'm getting out of my one p.m., like it is so hot, it's burning up, like so hot. But it's you know it's nothing compared to Houston weather because the humidity here is not even that bad except for yeah, when it rains. It's not. When it rains, now that's a different story because it'd be so hot, <laughs> so be, sticky, it'd bro. Be hot. But yeah, compared to Houston, it's not as like humid and like I would I I don't want to say like as hot because it's still hot here, but just the humidity is is nothing compared to Houston. Yeah, and also another thing, freshman week advice, bro. Like literally, don't buy the tickets to every single party, bro. That's literally what I did. Like I. When I was coming into here, they so HU Network was the first like uh, promoter to drop tickets, I guess you could say. And so they released their tickets in literally like June. And so I was like, but they had an all access pass, so I got it. I was like, okay, all access pass because everybody in the other videos will always be like, oh, guys, make sure you get the all access pass. You're gonna be saving a whole bunch of money than having to pay ten, fifteen dollars per event. And you, on I only had to pay twenty five for to get access to all the events except for like two. But um, we literally went to one party, one HU, one HU network. network party, and but it was only because some we we wanted to get the money's worth. So if it wasn't even for us buying all access pass, we wouldn't have even been to their parties. Like that party was kind of fun though. It was. It was. I just got a headache, so <laughs> I Ubered home. But it's it was it was cool. But I'm just saying, like, and I also brought whenever the rebels came out, I brought the rebel events. I didn't go to none of the rebel events. I. I didn't go to Pretty Nasty because I wanted to stay at Taste of Howard. And then I didn't go to the You Know What, The Neighbors house party because um, I had just been to the house party the day before and I just didn't feel like going again to another yeah. house party. So I literally, uh, I think for H uh, for Rebels, I brought the $5 early access. So I only spent $10 on those tickets together. But yeah, I think, 
I think I the only party I really went to was House of Reggae. Like that was like the party party, like night party, because there was a bunch of stuff going on throughout the day. My only really night party was House of Reggae, and then of course the two thousands darty. That it was ate. fun, y'all. It ate. It was. It was great. It was fun. Yeah. Now me, I probably bought like one ticket because I believe like back whenever they're telling us to get the tickets. I don't think that people should pay to go to a party. That's me personally. And but I was just going to But if it's at a venue, they have to find a way to pay yeah. off. I get that. But I was like, I'm not going to pay like all this money to go to a party. I'll just... And then like, what if I don't even go? Or like, what if I pay the money and then it's boring, you know? So I was like, me personally, I would just wait to get the ticket and see if I really was going to go. So that's what I did. So I didn't like just waste my money on the tickets. But yeah... But with that, it's kind of like a hit or miss because if you wait, the prices will be higher. But at the same time, you have the freedom to figure out if you like really want to go to a party and not like force yourself to go just because you've already paid the money for it. Yeah. Type thing. So, and I'm saying like when you order early, your tickets be like five dollars. But when you order last minute, the tickets gonna be twenty dollars per ticket. Like everybody that didn't buy House of Reggae tickets had to pay twenty dollars to get in. But since I had all access pass. It got it let two people get in for free. Well, not for free, but two people, yeah. two people could go on that all access pass instead of everybody that waited to the last minute. They had to pay twenty dollars for their ticket. So that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, um, moving week was pretty fun. Oh, you I was gone. Here. Yes. Yeah, moving week was pretty fun. Um, I we both moved in. So moving was Monday through Saturday. We both moved in on the Monday, so we moved in the first day of the week. So. We had to leave, which was August 8th. So we left our cities very early. And it was kind of like, because, you know, you, you see on Instagram, people from our city that was coming here that didn't li that lived in, like, that was going to stay in CHN. They wasn't even leaving until, like, Thursday or Friday of the week. And we were already up here, like, moved in for four days now. Like, and I'm like, dang, like, I had to leave Houston so early. I left Houston August 6th, bro. I left August 7th. Yeah. I left the day after you. Yeah. But, yeah. Moving week and then freshman week, like bison week. Oh, that's whenever we had or orientation. Just know <laughs> that if you're if you're gonna be an SOB, you're gonna be in orientation all the t the whole time during um bison bison week. week. Like we missed a lot of fun stuff being an SOB. Like we missed missed the rep uh read the reps. Like we just missed a bunch of fun things that was happening because SOB orientation is like all day, all day, all week. And you gotta dress up, but. I don't really care about the dressing up part, except for the the part when it's hot and you gotta wear the blazer. That's kind of it's kind of hot, but I don't really care about dressing up. I mean, at least it tells me what to wear because I I be trying to figure out what to wear every single day. So S O B orientation actually the wasn't, first day was fun. Yeah, actually wasn't that bad. It was just like I think it was that Wednesday whenever we stayed there like for a long time. No, whenever was, no, I whenever was, we tried to leave, oh. it was that day. <laughs> I don't even remember, but I just know. No, I think it was the day before that. Like, For real? Yeah, cause it, was, it was the day that we did nothing fun. I think it was Tuesday. We literally did nothing fun. We just had back-to-back -back presentation, presentation, presentation. And everybody was just complaining just that it was there. so long. It was just, so. we just sat there. But other than that, SOB orientation was, it was okay. I mean, it wasn't just all that, but The first day was go. super fun. First day, we had, like, dance breakouts and TikTok challenges mm -hmm. and swag and surfing. Oh, also, learn dreams and nightmares. <laughs> I don't know that song, bro. I still, Grim. yeah. They play that. They really do play that every single party. But I'm still not gonna like. I was trying to learn it back when I was in Houston, but I could not get into that song. Like it just wasn't interesting to me. Like I couldn't. I couldn't rock with the beat. The beat takes so long to drop. But they literally played it every single party here. And I'm just standing there like. <laughs> See me. I've been like, I've been to the song. Like I didn't have to just like learn it to come up i've been new to songs so i was fine and also swagging and surfing is a real thing and you gotta know how to do it because they will call you out and like stop and restart yes literally so you gotta you don't learn go how to do it here here to begin with like you go <laughs> you go slow slow and then whenever the beat drops then you go hey, hey. but you don't like go like this the entire time like no that's funny but yeah but is that it? I think that is it, Taylor. I think that's it. I don't have anything else to talk about. Like, 
If you guys have any other questions, make sure to drop them in the comment below. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Okay.